Hey, what's up everybody? True Boxing here. Thank you for coming back to get hit with the truth. Today we're going to be doing the what's next on former 122 pound super bantamweight champion Ryosuke Iwasa coming off his tough fifth round TKO loss to undefeated Mirajan Akhmadalayev as, as he challenged Akhmadalayev for the 122 pound unified super bantamweight title. Um, it was a tough loss for Iwasa, but it was a premature stoppage uh, for sure. Iwasa was um, was fighting. He was he was competing in the fight, but uh, Akhmadalayev was just beating him to the punch. Akhmadalayev, you know, very good fighter on the rise. He's only nine and zero now, and he's got seven KOs. But you know, he was a defending unified champ, coming off his biggest win against Danny Roman, taking on um, the tough Iwasa. And he was, like I said, he fought hard, he competed, he's he's solid, but uh, Ahmed Alayev was just was breaking him down and, and beating him to the punch, and he had kind of stunned him a couple times, but it didn't seem to hurt him real bad, but he wobbled him enough to where, and started jumping on him, but Iwasa was throwing back to where the referee um, just jumped in and stopped the fight uh, early. And, you know, eventually I think... Uh, Akhmat Madalayev might have stopped him, but he was a very tough fighter, and he can fight into the late round. So, you know, so it was tough. It was it was sad to see that fight get stopped early, and he was to not get the full opportunity. But he did lose, and now the big question is, what's next for Ryosuke Iwasa coming off that loss to Akhmat Madalayev? So, um, my opinion on Iwasa is maybe it's time to be done with the 122 pound super bantamweight division he's been there for a few years he um he was upset by a controversial decision to tj Dahani in 2018 and he worked his way back got two uh nice wins over cesar juarez and marlon tapolis uh to work himself back in line but he got a shot against the best guy right now and that's akhmat Alayev, and he came up short now the thing is, is does he believe that he came up short, you know, uh, does he, you know, it's tough to make that weight over and over and over. Is, does he want to test the water still at 122 and give it one more crack? I think he can, and I, and I wouldn't fault him for it, but I also think that 122 might make sense. He's a taller fighter at 122, and he's never been afraid of coming over to the United States and fighting. He's not that prototypical um, Asian fighter that stays over in Asia and dominates and then gets a crack out of nowhere in the U.S. No, Iwasa has been very competitive and in, 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 uh, able and willing to fight out of out of his own country. So I'm going to run through the top 10 real quick um, at 122 and see what's, what could possibly be next for him. First up at number one is the undefeated unified champ, Rajan Akhmadalayev, which would be a rematch. The rematch is not going to happen. So that's off the table. Number two is undefeated WBC champion Luis Neri. Neri has other options that he's going to take next before he would consider a guy like Iwasa. I wouldn't completely rule it out because Iwasa is, you know, a tough fighter. But Neri is very close to signing his next fight. Um, I don't know if he gets in. And it's probably going to be against a decent opponent. So why take a step back against a guy coming off a knockout loss? I don't see that one. Number three, Daniel Roman. Roman is, is in the driver's seat to land a title shot next, either against Neri, Brandon Figueroa, or Stephen Fulton Jr. I don't see um, Roman fighting Iwasa. Iwasa was at number four, but he's no longer at number four. Number four now is Azat Hovanasian. This is an interesting one that I don't think Iwasa should completely turn his head against because Hovanasian top five guy very dangerous my opinion he's the boogeyman at 122 but he also holds the wba's number one contender spot right now if iwasa wanted to say hey i'm not happy about the way i lost i want to get right back in the mix a win over Havanasian would put him back in the mix now not sure if this fight can uh, can happen but i definitely think Havanasian, who gets it widely avoided would consider it and would 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 take the fight if iwasa wanted it so I'm going to lean towards a no because I'm not sure Iwasa wants that smoke. But if he did, I think Havanasian would want it. So it's something to consider for Iwasa if he wants to get back in the mix right away, especially being upset about the premature stoppage in the fight with Akhmadalayev. Okay, 
Number five now is the undefeated Brandon Figueroa. Now this one is interesting. If Figueroa does not get the Luis Neri fight or Daniel Roman in his next fight, I wouldn't be surprised if he fought a guy like Iwasa. Iwasa has worked with uh, the PBC. Um, actually, his two prior fights to the Akhmad Alaya fight was um, on PBC, Fox PBC cards. So, absolutely think Iwasa would fight Figueroa. And I think if Figueroa doesn't get one of those other names, I think Iwasa's a good opponent to consider next. It'd be a tough fight for him, but it'd be uh, a way of him taking the next step in his, in his young career and facing off against world-class competition. So, wouldn't completely rule it out. I, I think it could possibly happen if Figueroa doesn't get that big fight he's been wanting at 122. Um, number six, I believe now, is Ronnie Rios, the former champ. Ronnie Rios has actually moved in line uh, and been ordered to fight Mirage on Ahmed Alayev next. So, him and Iwasa not going to happen next. Number seven now is the undefeated WBO champion, Stephen Fulton Jr. Now, here's another one I think is possible. Stephen Fulton, very good, talented fighter, undefeated. I don't think he would he would turn his head to fighting a former champion because I think Stephen Fulton, in all honesty, if he doesn't get Daniel Roman next or, or Luis Neri or Brandon Figueroa, which I don't know if those guys want to fight a guy with the style of Fulton, um, and he doesn't get Michael Conlon later in the year who's trying to become the number one contender, I absolutely think Fulton would consider a guy like Iwasa. Especially, like I said, he wants to coming off a premature stoppage of being a former champ, and Fulton want to make a name for himself. I think that fight could definitely be possible. Again, Uwasa has worked with the PBC, so I think it's a makeable fight. So I wouldn't completely rule this one out. Number um, he was number seven. Number eight now is Ionu Baluda. Well, Ionu Baluda is actually in line to fight Michael Con. I think he's fighting Michael Conlon next. Yeah to determine a WBO's number one contender. So, win or lose, I don't believe Baluda is going to fight Iwasa, and I don't think Iwasa would want to fight him if he's coming off a lot. So, not seeing this one. Um, and then, you know, I got Iwasa right around number nine, or tied, a three-way tie between him, TJ Dahani, and Angelo Leo. Um, I don't think a rematch with Dahani, I don't think Dahani wants that, especially Dahani got beat last year against Baluda, um, and he hasn't fought since. That's been 14 months. I don't think he'd want to come back in a rematch against Iwasa, so I'm going to say no. And then Angelo Leo, um, that, that's a fight I wouldn't be surprised if it were to get made for those two guys to jump back in the title hunt. Um, both coming off of losses. Uh, Leo lost his first fight to, you know, um, Stephen Fulton Jr. And, you know, Iwasa lost to Akman Alayev. I did it, but Leo is a PBC guy, and Akman Alayev, I mean, and Iwasa has competed against PBC, so I wouldn't completely rule it out. So, you know, um, it's a lot to consider, but Yurosuke, Ryosuke Iwasa, do not write him off. Not surprised if he comes back at 122. Not surprised if it's 126. I'm not surprised if he gets right back in the mix in a title eliminator, and I also wouldn't be surprised if he goes into, um, you know, just kind of comes back and stays busy and gets a win or two, but I definitely don't think his career is over. I think he's got a lot more to give. That was a premature stoppage against Ahmed Alayev, and it was a shame, but he can get back uh, on that horse and definitely still do some damage. So, want to see him back hopefully soon and before the end of the year. All right, guys, that's it. That's the What's Next on Ryosuke Iwasa, the former Super Bantamweight champion. Hope you enjoyed it. True boxing. You've been hit with the truth.